This day, as I was preparing a lesson on adult education or lifelong learning, the discipline I teach at the university, I asked ChatGPT, the artificial intelligence tool I told you about last month, for help by saying, write a lesson on the autobiographical method. In a few seconds, he wrote me a lesson that would have taken me hours to prepare. I was surprised by the result. A clear, straightforward exposition with relevant and interesting topics. This new tool, the ChatGPT, launched three months ago, as I already told you, will revolutionize our society the world of health, economics, and especially education. Internet, internet search engines had already revolutionized the way we study and do research. If before the internet we resorted to books and the libraries to do research, which, which took us months of study, with search engines, it takes only a few days and uh, with much better results. Now, with this new tool, we will take even less time because ChatGPT not only offers the list of bibliographic documents to consult, as Google does, for example, but even produces complete and well-crafted texts to the point that we cannot distinguish either whether they were written by a machine or human beings. Certainly, we are still in an early stage. The program was launched only three months. And uh, there are still many limitations. In fact, the lesson that ChatGPT had written for me was not enough to make a university lecture, and I had to supplement it with other content. Two days ago, while, while I was still in, intrigued by the lecture prepared by the AI, I asked ChatGPT, write me a homily on the transfiguration of Jesus and he made the homily in seconds, why it usually takes me hours. The homily was also well written, with exact information regarding the place, the characters, the unfolding of the events, etc. But I have to tell the truth. This time I was not so thrilled with it. If the notions contained are right and uh, the style elegant, dear beloved faithful, today we celebrate the feast of the transfiguration of Jesus, etc. Everything is perfect. What is missing in that text, however, is hard. Then again, why wonder? It would be like marveling if, after listening to Beethoven's Moonlight, played by a robot, we are not moved. An artificial intelligence has no heart, otherwise it would no longer be artificial. I could not expect him to write a homily that touched my heart. He informed me about what happened on the day of transfiguration, but he did not convey to my heart the profound beauty of that event. Incidentally, I want to assure you that the homily I am giving you now was written by me, like all the others you have heard and not by chat GPT. Artificial intelligence 
can never grasp the beauty and depth of our faith. It can never comprehend a page as wonderful as this one of Jesus' Transfiguration, which tells us about friendship. Jesus invites the three friends of the heart to give them a unique thrill. These three friends of Jesus are enraptured by the beauty that is manifested before them and begin to babble. How now nice to be here? Let's make three tents. So much for ecstasy. The Transfiguration speaks to us of filial love and fatherly love, like that of parents who melt when they, fee, they see or even think of their children. We heard the voice of the most godfather who melts as he looks at his son and says, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. The Transfiguration speaks to us of great visions, Elijah, the prophecy, and great way, ways to go, Moses, the law. It speaks to us of infinity and of a life that smells of heaven. These are all things of which artificial intelligence has no idea. The Transfiguration is an anticipation of the Resurrection. In the marvelous painting of the Transfiguration preserved in the Pinacoteca of the Vatican Museums, the last work of Raphael that he left us almost as a spiritual testament, the Transfigured Jesus looks like the risen Jesus. The Transfiguration is the powerful experience of love, like those experiences that envelop us and overwhelm us during our lives, such as the birth of a child or grandchild, the achievement of a college degree, the victory in an important competition, marriage or the experience of falling in love, a grand event, all the fleeting moments of beauty that confirm us to us that life has meaning. What does ChatGPT know about all this? What does it know? Um, what does it know about the emotion that make you cry with joy? And finally, the Transfiguration narrative ends. The disciples, lifting up their eyes, saw no one but Jesus alone. Only Jesus remains. Everything else passes away. So, how can we prefer to remain anchored in the phantasmagorical and illusory images that dazzle and blind us instead of looking at Jesus. And uh, they heard the voice of the Father saying, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Jesus alone is worth listening to. Then how come we are deafened by so many useless voices and prefer to listen to the various Ferranians or any other charlatan instead of listening to Jesus. With Jesus we have everything we need to be happy and to fill our lives with beauty. But instead, why do we resign ourselves too easily to unhappiness? and uh, give ourselves over to ugliness. Here then, in the face of this mindlessness of man, I already know what the next question 
I will ask Chat GPT will be. And I think this time it will take a little longer to answer. But is man really an intelligent being? <laughs>